for not I want to go across to Ami Bhai Yagnik Ms Yagnik before so I ask my please, question can you please, confirm please, that you can please, hear me Ms Yagnik do you hear me finish may I please finish may yes I okay let Mr Abibullah finish I'm coming to you I just want to finish I just want to finish this. It's not only a, qu a question of the deployment of the army along the line of control. It's a very question of what is that line of control. Okay, no. That Be itself because there are some very that serious that questions that we've established in this broadcast so far, Ms. Yagnik. And it seems that this is just an attempt to protect and preserve the legacy of the Gandhi family, the Nehru family, which is why the Henderson Brooks report has not been made public. We've established through some of the top experts that militarily there is nothing secretive or uh, so classified that you can't reveal it. Why is it that we have to find out from an Australian journalist or what happened in 1962? Why doesn't your government make it public, madam? Ami Ben Yagnik? Uh, you just confirmed that you can hear us and now you can't. So I'm sort of wondering uh, what's going on over here because she just said that she can hear us, Sandeep. Sorry, I hope I'm I, I, I want to come in and ask you. You've been pouring through this whole report. There are certain bits. Why don't you just tell our viewers about the bits that have been kept away because this particular journalist hasn't made all uh, the aspects of the report public. Which are the bits he's withhold, withheld and why? Well, actually, uh, there are about 120 pages uh, of the report and this is more or less the entire meat of the Henderson Brooks uh, report and I mean it's all here the all, all the senior leaders that he has indicted he's he's been very harsh on the uh, uh, in the Indian Army generals of the time he's been uh, severe on the defense minister and even on the the, the foreign secretary of the of the day uh, mr. Desai and also the uh, intelligence uh, chief the director of intelligence bureau uh, for the intelligence lapses for not giving the troops on the ground uh, tactical intelligence and, to the, and and these are the complaints that we keep hearing every time there is an inquiry into our lapses whether it's in Cargill or it's in the IPKF uh, uh, deployment in 1987 so I mean uh, very clearly nothing has changed in all these years you know in fact it was General Nambiar who assessed this report to see whether between the 1962 war and the 1987 deployment in the Indian peacekeeping force in Sri Lanka, things have changed. General Nambiar, for those who are not so familiar with India's military history, why don't you tell us why your assessment showed that nothing much had changed in the way that we deployed our forces between 62 uh, and 1987 and why that's very worrying in the current context, sir? Yeah, well, this is related to the point, I think, which Bharat Varma made about the Kargil Review Committee report and things like that. In, I think it was end of 89 or early 1990 when General V. N. Sharma was the chief of the army staff and our commitment in uh, Sri Lanka was coming to an end. He, I was then the additional director, the number two in the Director General of Military Operations and uh, he tasked me to study this report to check uh, whether the lessons that emerged from the 1962 conflict had been, uh, had been learned and put to good effect in uh, in, in the commitment that we undertook in uh, Sri Lanka. And that's how I had uh, uh, occasion to go through this report in its entirety, which is one of the reasons why I don't have to refer to Neville Maxwell's uh, uh, internet leak to, to know what's in the report. I studied the report and without going into the uh, uh, various aspects in, in great detail, I must say that the lessons learned in terms of uh, uh, intelligence, uh, failures in terms of uh, micromanaging the deployment and actions of troops at the ground level uh, uh, both in the 1962 operations uh, and in Sri Lanka there was hardly any difference uh, which reveals that uh, uh, we did not really uh, learn lessons from the 1962 conflict uh, and put them to good effect. And now those are on the files, of course, in the Military Operations Directorate and those lessons were uh, ultimately the lessons learned from the Sri Lankan operation were compiled and put out to our various uh, uh, schools or colleges and institutions of no, instruction. But what General Nambiar so is uh, saying, succeeding generations you know, just reflects put, uh, how between 62 and 87 we didn't uh, learn knowledge. much. And when the Kargil war happened in 1998, uh, 99, we were still making the same set of mistakes. And I want to go across to Ami Bhai Yagnik, uh, who I'm told finally uh, is through. Ms. Yagnik, can you confirm that you can hear me? Yes, you know, yes, I can hear you. We've heard all the con government's arguments being demolished by our experts on the show. 
The reason that the Congress government gives for not declassifying this report is that operational tactics will get revealed uh, to China. That now we've, we're hearing from people like General Nambiar who says that things have changed in the last 52 years. There's nothing in the Henderson Brooks report uh, which impacts India's operational preparedness to deal with China. Why then, madam, do you not make this report public? Rahul, let us first, uh, let me first make a point that these are classified documents and whoever has made them uh, public at this point of time after 50 years should answer for that because we are dealing here with several issues here. We are talking about national security, we are talking Madam, about... Madam, you are not answering my question. Uh, you are not answering my question. Government. That's no, no, what you have, told us for 50 general. years. I am asking you a straight and direct question. Why is it that we have to depend on a foreign journalist to tell us what's in the Henderson Brooks report? Why doesn't the UPA government make that report public? Why don't you declassify these documents across the world? Militaries after 30 years declassify all classified secret information. Why can't you do the same in India? Do you think, Rahul, that these are documents which have to be discussed in a public domain? Oh, absolutely. Whatever that Australian absolutely. might have come absolutely, out with a report. Madam. But you just heard from General Nambiar. Madam, one second, please don't shout. Madam, one second, we've had a very sensible debate. I don't know what your brief is, but I don't want you to shout.